got to pick one to begin with. Does anybody know what LEG stands for? He just said it. This is a free one. You get a prize if you were listening. Yeah. Who can tell me what LED stands for? Nice. Do you want safety glasses or a patch or stickers? Sticker? She was listening. You can have a sticker too. I don't, I don't want you to feel like you're going to up. So you can have uh, safety glasses or a patch. And yeah, we're going to give stickers out to just about everybody. Yeah, come on up and grab it. So yeah, it's a light emitting diode. Okay, guys? So this is a diode. A diode means it's a puzzle piece that can only go in one way. Okay? It has a positive and a negative. Yeah? I know which way it's supposed to go in. You know which way it's supposed to go in? Okay, which? It's supposed to go in where the light is. Where the light is? Yeah. And it goes right here. Yep, it goes in the, in the 13 and GND. Yep, right there. Yeah. So guys, the long one, if I can think for a really long time about one thing, that's positive, right? But if I can only think about something for a really short period of time, that's, that's negative. negative. So if we look at these wires, one of them is long and one of them is short. If I'm long on patience with you as an instructor, that's a positive attribute. If I'm short with you, that's a negative attribute, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's also a flat side of the LED. The flat, the flat side of the LED, if you guys look at the top, it's kind of hard to see. But the flat side looks like a negative symbol, okay? It's on the negative side. So we need to plug the negative side into ground, GND, and the positive side into the, into the pin that we're blinking, pin 13. So it says number 13. And so when we plug it in, guys, yeah, you guys will know if you did it right. Like I did it wrong, okay? But he's, he's got it right. I want you guys to hold up. Hold up your LEDs once you've got them blinking. So the long one goes in the 13, the short one goes in the GND. Nice, nice. And so this is really cool for classroom management because I don't have to ask any questions. I just go around and I look, and I say, okay, he's got his LED blinking, he doesn't need any help. If you can even set up a system where you tell people if you've got a question, I want you to light up an LED. So you can actually say, if you've got a question, light up an LED and you just watch the LEDs. We also have teachers who will hook a microphone for this. And um, once it gets too loud in their classroom, the face will show up. They can use it for classroom management. You guys can create tools. You can have the students creating, helping to create these tools for classroom management. I'm saying using a sound sensor. And once it gets to a certain threshold, you flash an LED or you have a primary face up. Where you can change the thresholds depending on what's being done or if it's lunch time. And you can, so we're giving constructive as a back to the teachers as well as the students. You guys can make you guys can make musical staircases in your school, and then you're going to get the dog in one of the kids getting more publicity, and the kids are going to want to come to school and making it part of their school culture. Right, you're giving them a stake in the culture and developing the technology. They want to show up the technology in that class because then they can make an interactive mural. So they can sew LEDs into the cave of their school houses. So, so guys, you try some LEDs flashing. It does, doesn't it? Are your numbers lower or higher than like me? So you guys, I need your attention. What makes it blink? Get my hand up. Great. Okay, so you guys have LEDs flashing, right? Yes. Check out what Angela made. So she sewed this. 
Well, let her talk about it, yeah. You guys already know how to do this, because you changed you how fast they went, and then I just subbed them with our syllable one that we saw before. And the same thing. So you can plug it in, or you can show it. Whatever your creative ideas are. So you could sew this into, like, maybe your school flag? Awesome. Right? If you guys have, like, a flag for your school? Yeah, we have a red flag. Nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or you can sew it into like maybe your school mascot has a cape. We <laughs> got a sun. Well, a sun. LEDs. Yeah. It's a bunny. It's a bunny. Okay. Don't sew LEDs into the bunny's eyes because that looks creepy. Okay. So we explain it when it's down to the Oh, it's a lie. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. But you could, you could put LEDs on the page. Good for you. Don't go too far ahead, though. So guys, you guys are blinking LEDs now. Let me get you guys attention. I really like it that you guys are excited. This is awesome, but I need your attention, okay? So let's talk about what's going on with the electricity. So, yeah. I know what's happening. Okay. The light took place at the blinking light. Yep. So it depends how fast yours were, or how slow it was. Exactly. Yeah, guys, so our code is making us blink. So our code, when we talk, when we talk to LED, it's sending electricity out through 13. The electricity is going through the LED and back down to ground, because the electrons always need to flow, okay? They always need to go from power to ground. So we're gonna talk about the code next. But you guys understand, what happens if I take the LED and I plug, I plug it in backwards? It won't work. It won't work, right? That's because it's a diode and it has something called polarity. Okay? It's a puzzle piece that only fits in one way. So you guys can experiment with this. Uh, for the adults in the room, there's a current limiting resistor in the microchip. And that's why we're not burning out the LED. Because this, this provides 40 milliamps of current. So voltage is like how far the electricity can travel. And current is how much work it can do. But just like people, if we do too much work, we get really tired and we burn out. Just like yeah. components. If you try to put too much electricity through this LED, it's going to burn out. It's no good anymore. Okay? It's just like you guys, right? If you don't get recessed and you do too much work, even if the work is fun, then you're going to get super tired, right? You're going to burn out. So we need to make sure we don't send too much electricity through this. But there's something called a current limiting resistor. There's a resistor in here so that we don't burn this up. And this is a 40 milliamp system, so you never have to worry about the kids um, hurting themselves. The worst thing they're going to get is a static shock. The worst thing it's going to do to your hardware, guys, um, you might short out if you're just like plugging stuff in randomly. You, you can damage this, so make sure you know what you're doing when you plug stuff in. But the worst thing you're going to do to your computer is short out your COM port fuses. And the way you fix that is you just restart your computer. So if your computer is ever not talking to this guy, just restart your computer, OK? This is designed as a teaching tool. You're going to have a hard time doing any damage to your computer. It's like almost, a, it's pretty much impossible. So let's talk about the code, guys, OK? Because there's always the circuit side and then the code side. So we talked about the circuit side. We talked about the LED. Yeah. No, it'll actually burn out. It'll, it'll go really bright, and then it'll stop working forever. That's because you, you destroyed it, yeah. So you gotta be careful with that. It's like, if we plugged it into five volts, we, we could burn it out. And that's actually an excellent teaching, like ex experiential learning, 
Um, talk about experiential learning. If you plug the LED into five volts and into ground and burn out the LED, those kids are never going to forget that. It's a great way, it's a really cheap way. If you bulk order LEDs, like uh, I'll actually point you towards other websites where you can bulk, bulk order LEDs. Um, if you bulk order LEDs, it's like, a, it's like a tenth of a cent for that particular lesson. And it's great for teaching all about current and current limiting resistors and how that stuff works. So guys, let's talk about the code, okay? We're gonna talk about the code because we talked about the circuit. There's always two parts to physical computing. You guys are doing physical computing, okay? Um, so let's talk about the code. In here, we've got gray code. Gray code are comments. They're intended for human beings, okay? We're not deleting anything, we're just talking about it, and I'm explaining parts of it. So the gray code is comments. This is really important because that's like for, for me and Mikey, or for me and Angela, or me and Will, to figure out how this stuff works. So you guys can read these comments, anything in gray. Do you mind if and it I doesn't actually this? change. It's gonna video it doesn't actually is that okay? change um, anything to do with the code. The computer throws it out, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a comment in here. And so, uh, because comments are very important, when you work on this really hard, you want everybody to know about the projects that you worked really hard on, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to put our name in here. So I want you guys to go down uh, below where it says star slash, make a new line, okay? And we're going to put a comment in here by making two slashes. You see how it turns gray? One slash is black, two is gray. So I want you guys to make a new line and make two slashes. And we're going to write our name in here. So I'm going to write my name because I want the world to know that I worked on this code. If you're having trouble making slashes, right after. There you go. Put your name in there. If it's not gray, guys, look what happens if I don't have my two slashes. It's not gray. That's how I know it's not a comment. Oh, put a slash right there. Right in front of your name. If you guys don't put comments in your code, and one of your teachers comes around to try to help you, it's no fair to the teacher, okay? It's kind of like if your teacher just marks a problem wrong, and they don't write a comment about why it's wrong. It doesn't help you learn, does it? No. So I had we had a we had one of my coworkers had a kid who wrote five thousand lines of code for a really complicated robot. Okay, that robot was talking to satellites to get its position, just like you guys can learn how to do. Like I was talking about GPS. Okay, but he didn't put any comments into the code. Yeah. Even though he was really good at coding, he was really really good at coding. But it came to game day, and he tried to upload the code, and there was one error, OK? But there wasn't a single comment anywhere. So my friend took a look at his code, and he said, I can't help you, because there's no comments. So he had to walk away. Even though this guy put so much work into it, because there were no comments, there was no way to help him with his code. So you guys always have to put comments in that says, I'm trying to do this with my code. Well, I think this is supposed to turn on my LED, okay? Because what happens when I give Mikey my code for my breakfast making robot, okay? He might change it, right? And if he doesn't change the comments, let's say he changed the pan make to the pancake making robot to a waffle making robot, right? Yeah, but, then, but I don't know. I don't know when I go back to look at the code, right? So it's really important that everybody put comments into their code. So did everybody put a comment in? Yeah. You guys see how to do that with the two what? slashes? There's other ways to do that, and I'm sure you guys are going to explore that in the future. Let me show you really quick. If you highlight the text, you highlight right the text. click, we can do comments or uncomment here. That's another way to make comments. And then what do you do when you highlight it? You can click on, com like watch, if this isn't a comment, but I want to make it a comment, I can highlight it, and I can click on comments or on comment. And that will actually 
comment. Bam, turn yeah. it into a comment. So you, you turn it off of the comment. And so then I turn it back, back into, into a com uncommented. Comment. Yep. There you go. Yeah, Pretty sweet, right? Comment. And I can put a comment next to my code. So see how this is this is real code, guys. This isn't gray. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so like, yeah, like Mrs. Lindley was saying, and this will be this will be an important thing. Documentation is very important, guys, because then how does anybody know what your code is supposed to do if you don't document? It's just like scientists. That's the most important thing for scientists to do. You guys are now officially technologists. You were you were technologists before because you guys get the opportunity to work with Scratch, which is awesome. And so now, one of the important things of technologists is documenting so that other people can use your stuff. That's a cool thing about open source, free information. It helps everybody. It really helps your teachers and you learn, okay? So let's talk about the rest of this code. This card right here, this is an integer variable. So you guys remember how I was talking about variables? Yeah. Variable, it's a container for what? Yeah, what kind of stuff? What kind of stuff? Cheese? Yes, cheese. No, not cheese. Information. Information, yes. Okay, what kind of information is this? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> what kind of information is this? This guy right here? 13. It's 13. It's a number. It's an integer because there's no decimal, okay? That's why it says INT here. And its name is LED. We could name this, we could totally name this like uh, our school mascot is a bunny, okay? Or we could name it uh, sour cream and onions is the best potato chip flavor, okay? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. would that make sense? Yes. No, that would not make sense. Because we're talking to an LED. So we want to name it something that makes sense and is short. Because imagine if every time you wanted to use this piece of information, you had to type sour cream and onions is the superior potato chip flavor, right? That would, that, that's not convenient, is it? 